All right, hello guys. In this video, I'm gonna break down this year's expected storm tracks for this winter, and then I'm gonna actually give you guys real life examples from historic storms, what these types of storms can bring as far as snowfall to the northeastern United States. I'm only covering the northeastern and eastern United States storm tracks right now. I might be making a west, uh, western United States one, even though their storm tracks seem to be a little bit more erratic and unpredictable, so we're gonna have to see what I can do for that. But before I get started with this video though, I would ask you to do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now let's get right into things. First things first, you might notice that I did show these in my winter forecast. These are the maps from my winter forecast that you should check out for the storm tracks. And then I'm going to be showing you real life examples here. So you can see this is the Clipper, Alberta Clipper storm track. It goes from Montana and North Dakota all the way kind of southeastward and then back northeast inland. And this can bring moderate snowfall to north of wherever this storm tracks and then light snow slash snow showers to a lot of other areas. So here's one example. A lot of these storms are very big because it's hard to find snowfall totals for snowstorms that weren't so impressive. So these are kind of bigger examples of these storm tracks and the, the biggest of storms that these can bring. But you're going to have to kind of take it with a grain of salt. So these are kind of significant examples of these storm tracks. Now, this was a clipper that probably got some ocean influence there near New York City and then offshore of Boston. As you can see, the snowfall totals pick up once it heads to New England. But you can see that a lot of areas north of Pennsylvania and New Jersey got 4 to 10 inches of snow, as well as areas in Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio. This is pretty typical with, with these Alberta clippers. Uh, the 10 to 20 inches for New England, though, that's going to be where you're looking at more of like a rare event or a, a significant Alberta clipper. Our second example, this is a like very south dipping Alberta clipper, but I think this one's really cool because you can see the very beginning and end. You can see that horseshoe shape where it starts in South Dakota with that 4 to 10 inches within that very white shade, and that goes all the way down through Missouri, down into Tennessee, and some of those Gulf states actually. This one was from 2009. And then you can see back up through North Carolina, Virginia, and all the way back up the East Coast. Again, this one probably got a little bit of ocean influence once it hit the East Coast there and moves out to sea. Once these storms get over the ocean, they do get a lot more uh, intense and then drop more snow over the coastal regions of the United States. So some of these did get ocean influence. Now for the Alberta Clippers that get significant ocean influence and head straight out to sea, we call these Miller B Nor'easters. And all these are, are nor'easters that begin as Alberta clippers and then move out to the ocean somewhere in between South Carolina and New Jersey. These sometimes head out through kind of right over Long Island and then go south of New England. And that's how they get their ocean influence. And then sometimes they head way south in a big trough because they always go south with that jet stream. So if that jet stream is dipping way down, you can see them go way down and bring snow to areas like North Carolina and Virginia. Those are a little bit more rare though. This is the most common storm track we see with these ones and it brings heavy snowfall to Pennsylvania and southern and coastal New England here. So here's some examples of this one. This would be more of a d low dipping one. The storm track is just below where the snowfall is. So you could assume this one headed through southern Virginia and then out to sea from that point and this brought a lot of snow to West Virginia, Northern Virginia, DC, Maryland, New Jersey, and Southern Pennsylvania. So this is kind of a typical Miller B. Nor'easter. This one isn't too far-fetched. 10 to 20 inches of snow from these. Getting 10 inches plus from these is pretty typical. I would say most of the time you're looking at an 8 to 12 inch bullseye within these storms. So this is a little bit more significant than typical, but this isn't too far-fetched for a Miller B. Nor'easter. Same story with this one. This one's from January 20th through 22nd, 2014. You can see this one headed a little bit further north through kind of north central Virginia and then out through Delaware. This brought a lot of snow from West Virginia through a lot of those similar areas, but this one influenced and brought a lot more snow to northern New Jersey, New York City, and southern New England as opposed to our previous few that we've gone ahead and shown. But you can see the storm probably tracked just south of that bullseye area out to sea there. Then here's, an, this is like a little bit more of a I guess this one tracks a little bit closer to the coast than the other ones I'm trying to say. Uh, this one goes out through central Virginia as well, and, but you can tell that it curves 
and goes straight up the coast because this one brings very heavy snow to all of New England, 10 to 20 inches widespread throughout upstate New York and New England alike. This would be if we see a negative NAO, which you can go back and check out my video uh, for the pattern change. That was my most recent video. That one talks a little bit more about NAO, but you would see the storm track actually track a lot closer to the coast. And this is what the result would be if the storm tracks very close to the coast. A lot more snow a little bit further inland there. You can see Boston isn't quite in that bullseye, but still very, very significant snowstorm there. This was February 2nd, 1995. Uh, and here's another example, 2015, 2014 to 2015 had a ton of these Miller B nor'easters, especially very northern based ones. So this is why Boston got so much snow that year was because of all of these Miller B nor'easters. So you can see these ones actually tracked through Pennsylvania and New York City and then did that thing where I said they basically track over Long Island and then just south of New England. And this brought the bullseye through upstate New York and into Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, southern Vermont, southern New Hampshire, and the bullseye really being Boston here, where that storm was able to just linger around right there and bring just tons of snow for a lot of these areas. This is always possible with Miller B. Nor'easters, but this was one of the biggest examples of a Miller B. Nor'easter. This was a massive one uh, that year, 2014 to 2015. If you lived up there, you remember it. All those blizzards that you guys had there in Boston were basically... Miller B. Nor'easters. Here's another one from that same year. Again, we got a couple of those that year. January 29th through February 3rd. Now, this one tracked through Iowa, through Chicago, and then through to upstate New York, and then again, southern Vermont, southern New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut. All of these areas got 10 to 20 inches plus within that blue shade. And this one probably tracked, again, just south of New England and then up the coast kind of. Now, our next one is a Miller A nor'easter, and the difference between this one and a Miller B is a Miller B starts out as an Alberta Clipper, starts up there in Montana and North Dakota and makes its way to the East Coast. A Miller A nor'easter starts out in the Gulf of Mexico and tracks up the entire East Coast. These ones are known for being even more major than a Miller B nor'easter. They cover a wider area, and they're usually more intense. Now, here's a really good example of a more inland Miller A nor'easter. February 14th through 17th, 1958, probably almost none of you remember this storm, but you can see it brought a lot of snow to the northern Gulf states, which is possible, but not always likely. It does happen sometimes where we see those areas get snowfall in extremely cold examples, but not always. But you can see this one tracked up the coast and brought a lot of snow to central Virginia through D.C. and Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and then New England got blasted there with some of those dark blues bringing 20 to 30 inches of snow. Usually in these ones, we see a 12 to 14 inch bullseye and a Miller A nor'easter. Usually you see that area, again, get 10 inches plus at least, but there is some examples where we see 20, 30 inches plus, and these are the extreme examples. This is a very major storm, so this isn't what can be expected, but as far as track, this can be expected. But a lot of those 20 to 30 inches is a little bit uh, far-fetched, but it is always possible. Could happen. Now, here's another Miller A Nor'easter. This one's from January 24th through 26th, 2000. This one's a little bit more east-based. You can see a lot of those areas in central North Carolina got snow, like Raleigh. And then also areas like Norfolk, Richmond got destroyed. They got 10 to 20 inches of snow. That's pretty rare for you guys. And then up through eastern Maryland into New Jersey and then into New England. But really, this one had a mid-Atlantic special with a lot of... 10 to 20 inches for that area. Again, the bullseye is usually a lot closer to 10 inches in a weaker Miller A or a typical Miller A nor'easter, but sometimes you get these really intense ones that bring 10 to 20 to 30 inches of snow on rare occasions. But this is a really good example of a Miller A nor'easter. Now here's an extremely east-based nor'easter, and probably a ton of you remember this one, actually. This one was from January 3rd through 5th, 2018, and there was a few years... In, the, in, in recent years, in a row, where the beginning of January started out with a huge nor'easter, Miller A nor'easter, uh, and that just seems to have happened at least like three years in a row where we had just this snowstorm to begin the month of January. I think last year we broke that trend, though, but you can see eastern North Carolina, eastern Virginia, the eastern shore of Virginia, Delaware, eastern Maryland, 
the east coast of New Jersey, New York City, Long Island, and then eastern New England there. So Connecticut, Rhode Island, Boston, Massachusetts, eastern New Hampshire, and then all, almost all of Maine there. All of those areas got basically 10 to 20 inches of snow. Uh, I remember I live in eastern Virginia. I got, I think I measured like 11 or 12 inches during this storm. So it was a major, major nor'easter. And these can happen when they track a little bit further east out to sea. And we get really cold conditions along the coast. These storms can basically bring a lot of snow right up against the coast. And this is a memorable one. So you guys kind of know uh, what this would feel like. So this is not, this one actually isn't too unrealistic on the NESIS scale, we have a category one here, which means it is notable, but it's not too crazy. So these do happen from time to time that storms like this could be possible this winter. Now for our fourth storm track, we have Appalachian runner. This storm is basically a nor'easter that's further inland and it tracks over land. We don't consider these nor'easters. I think the official like terminology nor'easter and what would actually consider it make it considered a nor'easter is along the coast if the winds are coming from the northeast correct me if I'm wrong but I believe that's actually what we would uh, classify a storm as a nor'easter as a, a weather guy I basically just any storm that tracks up the coast and brings snow or heavy rain to the coast during the fall and winter and spring months I consider that a nor'easter but there is like official like New England lingo uh, that's where it kind of comes from but this this storm track tracks more over land and brings heavier snowfall further inland and basically rain along the coast most of the time sometimes new england though even though the storm tracks right over you guys you guys do get wintry precipitation as you're going to see in these examples again this is the top all of these snowstorm examples that i'm bringing up are top 80 snowstorms of recorded history in the united states so these are very major snowstorms kind of like once a year type snowstorms in average winters, but some bad winters, we get three or four of these types of major snowstorms. But these are going to be more major examples once again. Uh, starting out things with the worst snowstorm of all time, at least in recorded, n debatably, in it's the worst of all time in recent history. March 12th through 14th, 1993, just widespread 20 to 30 inches. It, it was a major snowstorm, but you can see it's kind of like a nor'easter, except you can tell it tracks over land. Anywhere where you see those lighter snowfalls on the eastern side basically is where the storm tracked uh, to the west of there. The bullseye is usually just to the west of the storm track, so a lot of the blues, it probably tracked from western North Carolina up through central Virginia over kind of D.C., Maryland area, and then over Boston and probably over eastern Maine, bringing a lot of heavy snow to the Appalachian Mountains, hence the name Appalachian Runner. These bring the heaviest snowstorms usually to those mountain ranges on the East Coast and then up through upstate New York. So that's usually the bullseye with these storms. This one being a really good example. Now, here's another one. This is a much, much weaker storm. Again, category one on this scale. So this isn't too big of a deal, this one. It's a pretty major snowstorm, but not too big of a deal. December 9th through 14th, 2014. I guess this would be a pretty early snowstorm, a pretty nice early snowstorm for you guys. But we see that storm probably tracked, again, over central Virginia, up through into Boston and coastal New Hampshire and coastal Maine, where we had a lot of mixing issues with this one. And the bullseye for this one was upstate New York, interior Vermont, and interior Maine, where we saw t 10 to 20 inches of snow. These ones can be pretty major, just like a nor'easter. They don't get quite as intense usually because they don't have that ocean influence, but these can bring blizzards to the east coast, or the eastern United States, that is, basically. This one's, again, a pretty similar storm. November 26th through 28th, 2014, so this one's a very, very early snowstorm. And you can see it brought snow to Western Virginia, West Virginia, Western Maryland, Central Pennsylvania, and then up through the Central New England states. This one probably was inland over Virginia and then headed a lot closer to the coast. They probably tracked over New York City and then Boston as well and then over the ocean offshore of Maine. So this is kind of a mixture between a nor'easter and an Appalachian runner, but I think it's more like an Appalachian runner. But a lot of those whites and blues got a ton of snow with this one. Here's another pretty major example, February 23rd through 28th, 2010. You can see this one brought a lot of snow to West Virginia, Pennsylvania, upstate New York, New York City, uh, interior, interior New England. A lot of those blues and reds are, again, 30 inches 
in that range. So this is a lot more of a major example, kind of once every other year type storm right here. So this is a very, very major storm, kind of a rare example. But you can see most of the snow is based inland on that one. And here's a great example of a decent Appalachian runner. The storm on this one probably tracked over central Virginia out through New Jersey and then kind of over the ocean through New England. But the bullseye was through Pennsylvania, New York, and Vermont alike. But there was a lot of snow there for New England as well in those light blues where we saw 10 to 20 inches of snow with this one. This was February 18th through 20th, 1972. So here's all the storm tracks I just covered, and I think these are going to be the four most common storm tracks for the eastern United States. See, a lot of these start out in the Gulf or in Alberta and head in from Canada with those cold blasts and those Arctic blasts. These ones are very cold snowstorms and usually all snow for most areas. And you can see that New England is going to get, and the interior, like, the Appalachian Mountains. I think these are going to be the areas that get a lot of snow. If you saw my winter forecast, you know that already. But according to these storm tracks especially, I think that those look to be very likely areas to be extremely impacted by these storms. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked this video a lot, breaking down the storm tracks and a lot of what you could expect from certain storm tracks this winter as far as previous and historic snowfalls. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching the video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day.